And I've never been one of those guys that wants people to look at me. Yep. Even though that Phil, you know what that is. Look at me, look at me, look at me. <laughs> That's what that is. So <laughs> I never wanted that. I never wanted that. Yeah. Okay. Don't look at me. Look at him. Look at the guitar player. He started doing gekadoo, gun gekadoo. Yeah. Don't, right, don't right. Look at me. Don't look at <laughs> don't me. Don't look at me. <laughs> exactly. Talk and Caffeine TV. This is uh, Drummer's High talking about the joy and the emotion and the good parts of playing drums. Um, we got with me our, our friend of mine, Roger Friend, who, uh, although he's played with ours, I love to refer, refer to him as the ABBA guy. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Hit us. Tell us a few more of the bands you've played with because that, that's I mean, it's, a, it's an excellent one to have played with, but you're more than that. I'm a bit more than that. Yeah. That was uh, early in my career. <laughs> yeah. And I was actually their drum tech. Oh, you were? First. Oh, okay. First. That's right. where it started. In fact, I drum teched. I was the drum tech for the stars back in the oh. early days. I was going to UCLA yeah. in the 70s. Yeah. Yes, I'm old. That's a bit of... <laughs> and uh, experienced, I like to call it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But um, I actually you look, tech. You look good. It's the Swedish blood. Thank you. Yeah. It is. It is indeed. Um, so I can't thank anyone but that. Yeah. But um, I, I checked for Jeff Percaro for oh, a while. Oh, wow. So I did some of the early sessions, uh, got to work with him on s some really cool things. Did and you do any of the Steely Dan stuff with him? No. Oh, no, no, okay. no. That was East Coast. But, um, but uh, I did Boss Gags and mm -hmm. stuff. So I tuned drums for people. That's yeah. what I really do. That's yeah. what I've been doing for my whole life. But I was going to UCLA at the time, so yep. it was really handy. But um, I was also commuting to Vegas and playing with Tom Jones All right. at the Stardust, yeah. 1975 or whatever mm -hmm. year that was, and met Bette Midler and met a bunch of people who I ended up touring with a little bit as well. Yep. So that's where it all got started. <laughs> Is, is uh, as you're playing, there's that moment where the band suddenly everything comes together, and you have that that out of I won't say out of body experience, but it's that moment that you have transformed to something else. You, the band, and everything. Have, you've had this. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. Give us some experiences that you've had with that. Give me some, some times that it happened, and and uh, and uh, what do you call that experience? Mm. Hmm. It's it's um. It's almost surreal yeah. because it's an energy that's created by the music mm -hmm. and for the music, but at the same time, it's an individual thing. So you somehow symbiotically with whoever you're playing with, it all kind of culminates into this vibe that is created. And man, there are times where it's really unexpected, like playing in a little nightclub in Yugoslavia or somewhere right. where you have no idea who the sax guy is. He's just sitting in with you. And then suddenly he goes into a solo and the whole band is just like, whoa, it yeah. lifts. And so that energy is something that it, it's almost like you're speaking another language mm -hmm. that you don't need to understand. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's, that's where I really strived you know, to find those situations mm -hmm. and to, to, you know, duplicate them somehow, it can't be manufactured. You're right. It can't. It, I mean, it definitely has to happen. It has to just happen. Yeah. And it's, it's that symbiotic thing that's, um, yeah. So when that happens, I mean, you, you had a good description that it's the energy all working together. And when that happens, who's in control? You? Hopefully no one. Music? Hopefully no one. Ah, okay. Hopefully it's, it's involuntary. Mm -hmm. like breathing like mm. you really the less you think about it 
the better. And if someone thinks they're in charge, they're wrong. Oh no, I don't mean I don't mean like I'm the leader. What I meant was was are you thinking about what you're doing or is it just you you you're happening? <sighs> yeah, the less you think the better. Yeah. That's really kind of my motto in a way, <laughs> which is which comes in <laughs> handy. Yeah, I've seen that, Roger. <laughs> so so you know, I think it's less thinking, more doing mm -hmm. and and allowing it to happen. So music isn't something that just you know, um, you you create because you've calculated it all. And, and I mean, it shouldn't be that alone. It should be a really nice combination of things where where it is a culmination of all the creative juices that everyone has. So if you're just playing by yourself, it's not nearly as in, as rewarding or enriching, yeah. really. Yep. And I think I think because I've had the opportunity to play in big bands and full orchestras and and all those things and even symphony stuff. Mm. It really teaches you something important, and as a drummer and percussionist, you, yeah, you don't necessarily take charge; you allow it to to work, and you're you're the guy that's kind of driving the bus. I yeah, call it very cool. Yeah. So you're not much from karaoke, are you? Not really. No. <laughs> I agree. It's against my religion. <laughs> yeah, I don't quite get it. Yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. It's fun to sing, but mm. <laughs> so drummers were definitely a different group from most of the other folks in the band, right? Hopefully. Uh, although, David said, well, uh, we are, but you know who's similar is trumpet players, and that... You, have you found that trumpet players, like drummers, will actually talk to each other and hang out and chat? Yeah, and, and I think that is true. Really? I hadn't really thought of that, but I think he's right. Yeah. It's, it's Well, he's got a lot of experience with that, right? Yeah. But with a group of folks who are really... They're pretty secure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's the key, mm. of, is you cannot be an insecure drummer. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Yeah. I mean, you can't really get through a gig unless mm -hmm. you really know not only what you're doing, but why. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so, I mean, it's, it's, but that's interesting. I'll have, to, I'll have to observe that a little more <laughs> with trumpet players. But I think that's true. I think they get along well with each other. There's less competition. Yep. And, um, yeah, the drumming community is amazing. It's like... Mm. So I've always figured, and it, because you, you have an instrument <clears throat> and you're playing it, somebody else sits down the exact same instrument, the energy that they're putting into it is not going to come out the same way that yours was into this. Mm -hmm. in, in drums, that's very apparent. Oh, yeah. And when you're playing something like a guitar, to me, that's a lot less apparent. True. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. And, and you have your own voice. Yeah, definitely yeah. have your own voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's really organic. I mean, drums are, because it's such an old design yeah. that hasn't been really changed that much, mm. and I love that about it. I mean, electronics are okay. They're cool. You know, they, they serve a purpose. Yeah. But, but a piece of wood bent <laughs> into yeah. a shape and then a couple of really cool heads on them, and uh, there's, there's nothing quite like that. The sound, the, the sonic depth that it has mm -hmm. and then when you get into symbols that's a whole another realm of of sonic values and and uh, timbre and dynamics and mm -hmm. musicality and symbols for me have always been kind of my trademark sound mm -hmm. pulling out harmonics and and depth and dynamics i don't just hit them <laughs> well no you can't no mm -hmm. no as as a joke, mm -hmm. I used to I said to my friend John John Good, mm -hmm. I used to say, really, all you're doing is making spacers for heads. And <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, it, and it's no, you don't understand what I'm talking right. about. Right. But at the same time, I know they're pitch matched. I I know drummers will say that yes, the drum the drum has a specific sound that they need to have, but the personal voice mm. is in the cymbal. Mm. Do you find that? true is that statement work for you and and if it does tell me a little bit more about why yeah i mean the the symbols to me mm. every single musical situation i'm in mm. requires a certain instrument a certain yeah. way to create the voice that you're wanting to portray yeah. so it's why you have to have a lot of symbols <laughs> it's, yeah it's not just so they look cool all set up everywhere but i i bring different symbol sets and i have them in separate bags and I know where they all are mm -hmm. because for any particular gig you want to have the right instrument mm -hmm. and and I've discovered more and more that that the lower pitched <laughs> cymbals have even more of a voice 
in sure. some respects. Yeah. And we used to always look for stuff that was higher pitched and would, would cut through. Mm -hmm. But I'm more about subtlety hmm. the older I get and more about different types of sticks even. I don't want to hear a whole lot of attack necessarily. I want to hear definition, but I also want to hear tonality and dynamic range and all the things that go with that. So the, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard for me to, um, unless I know what situation I'm in, mm. to even think about what what symbols I need to bring. So I end up bringing a lot, <laughs> to, especially sessions, which is mostly what I'm doing now. Right. And and I'll walk in with like a cartload just of symbols. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> You are not unusual. Yeah. I can tell you. Yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. Unusual. And then I have a card of <laughs> snare drums too. So so yesterday I was over at Tony Bronigle's house because he said, come over, I'm doing a, um, I'm doing a, pho uh, a photo shoot. I said, what for? And he said this thing in, in a, a magazine about snare drums. 45 snare drums. Oh, my God. 45. And the thing is I started laughing and saying, my God, what do you do with all these? And he said, come here, look. And he started pointing to the symbol bags that he had. Would you like me to go through each one of those symbol bags and tell oh. you where I use all of these yeah. like 68 different symbols? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. So you know when you're going out to a place, you know exactly what your inventory is, yeah. what your voices are and what you can have. Oh, yeah. So as you're playing and, and you, or, or as you're coming to this thing, a, a, a gig, mm -hmm. when you're, when you're going to be recording, you're thinking about there's the technique of what I want to play, but there's my voice. There's the way I want it to sound. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's an emotional response to your instrument as well yeah yes oh yeah mm. and so when you're playing it are you are you thinking of your your instrument as a living being is it a part is it a part of your voice an extension of who you are a living thing or is it your tool it's really both mm, okay because just as any other instrument there is it is a tool you, yeah. there's no way around it and there's more tooling involved in in, <laughs> in drum drums in general but um I, I play lots of different percussion instruments as well, mm. and each one of those is an instrument and a tool, but I try to make it or, or invite it to be organically part of me. Mm. So, so as, you know, and the more hands-on they are, the better, in my, my opinion. So I've gotten more and more into smaller hand percussion type stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's, um, it's definitely hands-on. And it is good that I have giant hands. Yeah, well you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because they'd be hurting by now. So, yeah, I think it's both. I think it's both. As we were talking a little bit before about how drummers are different than other people, when you're playing in a band, <clears throat> do you find that that sort of affects the way that you, you work with the rest of the band? In other words, are they looking to you more for communication and for other things than they are for other members of the band it really varies by situation okay if there's a if the music director um doesn't know you for example if you're in just says you know filling in or or doing a session hmm. you have to stay pretty quiet right because right. we have opinions <laughs> and some of those opinions don't necessarily need to be heard by everyone <laughs> fair point and yep. so so i have learned throughout the years that um <coughs> keep it Keep it simple, but also kind of listen. And then when you have an opportunity to l allow them to realize you really are in charge, <laughs> <laughs> then, then you sort of let, let, let that happen, you know, naturally. So, so yeah, I mean, I never want to say that the drummer is, you know, the most vital piece of the band, but maybe I do want to say that. So we want to say it's soft power. Well, is that what it's Yes, called? soft yeah. power. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Have you seen any instances of when, when drummers are being different from anybody else that really stand out in your mind? That you just like, you looked and thought, there you go, that's why I do this. Yes, yeah. that seems to happen quite often, actually. <laughs> and I love hanging out, um, at, especially in festivals. When you play festivals and you get to hang out with everybody, I was sandwiched in between Vinny and Weckl on a gig like 12, 15 years ago. You did okay, right? I did okay. There you go. <laughs> but, but when I showed up at the gig, I'm like, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are you serious? And so it was fun, but we all hung out afterwards and it was just so cool because, and then there's where the family thing happens. Right. It's, it's truly, uh, I feel so blessed to be a part of that, mm. that family because it's, it's, you can't even describe it to anyone else. 
But you're right. I mean, and I'll I'll pay attention to trumpet players now too. To see, I'm going to have if to they as well. Do, to see if they do that. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> so every, everybody, I mean, I I play hockey, mm -hmm. and every hockey player has their ritual before they go on the ice. You got to tap oh, things and all this kind of yeah. stuff. And drummers absolutely, we have the same thing. What are your you don't have to tell me the strangest ones. Which are the ones you would like to reveal? Yeah, mine <laughs> mine are pretty basic, mm -hmm. actually. I sit really quietly, ah. and I stretch. I stretch. I'll touch the ground. Yeah. Um, to and I guess it's a grounding thing. I don't even pick up the sticks until I'm going out. Are you Buddhist? Maybe. You gotta touch I don't the know. ground. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's a thing. Mm. And um, again, long arms come in handy yeah. for that. <laughs> I can almost do it here, but um, but I mean that's the one thing I've and it, there's something about being grounded. I studied Aikido. Oh, really? Yeah, and okay. it's all about center mm -hmm. yep. and, and balance, mm. you know. And I use the staff and all that, and and um, that was years ago, but it stuck with me throughout all the years. The, the whole balance thing to me is probably the key. So the ritual I do is more stretching. I should probably study Tai Chi, actually. Well, how does that affect your drumming then? Because I know that, that there are a lot of people who are studying balance, mm -hmm. and, and not just balance in, in physical, but also in emotional and such. Yeah. How does that affect the way you play? I think it really does, because I'm, I'm more centered. Mm -hmm. I think when you sit behind a kit, you obviously want to be comfortable. You, you, you don't want to have things set up so that they're hard to reach. or <laughs> yeah. You know, it's weird, and that was... We went through a whole period of that, all of us. Pancake you know. drums? <laughs> yeah. Or that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, so now everything is really ergonomic. I mean, it's yeah. the less effort, the better. Right. And so your dynamics are, are way clearer. Mm. Um, and I think that's all about centering. So I, I don't like sitting too low, for example, because it compresses you. Right. Yep. So finding a comfortable height. Uh, and your dynamic range and how the toms are set up and how many toms you use. I used to use way too many. <laughs> they looked cool, but it's like, I don't, don't hit that one that much, so that's gone. <laughs> and now I used to have three floor toms. It's down to two, sometimes one rack. It's, it's all about comfort now, I think. Yeah. But also, you can, use, you can use a kit just as musically and just as dynamic with less. Right. Yep. But I still have lots of symbols. So of course, of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Roger. That's important. <laughs> so we used to say, you know, you're talking about having too many drums around. We used to say that during the big band jazz area, that you, the two floor toms, this one was called the ashtray. Because that was where you, all you used it for was keeping the ashtray. Well, Buddy kept his towels on it. They were, they, they That's all he did. His 18 was just towels. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's... <clears throat> he was know. working hard. He was really he was physically working. active. Yes. yes. I, every once in a while, a martini or something. <laughs> We're not saying that's a good idea. No. Not when you're playing. No. <laughs> so, as you were growing up, <clears throat> uh, you, you weren't immediately thinking that you wanted to be a drummer. What were some of the clues you were? Oh, yeah. What, from birth? Five. Well, what, what clued you in that said, no, I want to play? The marching band. Oh, would march by our house. No kidding. I would hear them from a, a whole block away. Yeah. And I would run outside. I don't care what was going on in the house, mm -hmm. if I had clothes on or not, <laughs> I was outside to find the marching band because you could hear the drums from a block, oh. two blocks away, you could hear them. And they called to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I knew. I knew at five. Did you play in a marching band? I was in, I was the drum section leader for that marching band. Oh, good for you. Ten years later. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Yeah. Don't get emotional. No. no. Okay. We marched the Rose Parade a couple times. We did major shows. We went to Europe. I was 16, our first trip to Europe. In which town did you grow up? Down in San Diego. Oh, okay. Hey. Good for you. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So, so can you do all the weird flips and all that? Of course. <laughs> That's when snare drums, marching snare drums actually sounded like drums. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. No haters out there. No. No. I... I like the sound of Masonite in the morning. <laughs> Moving on. Sorry. Yeah, because I, I, I couldn't agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you're playing, being long-armed and everything, mm -hmm. do you ever get self-conscious about anything? Do you ever think, uh, oh, everybody's watching, or you just lose yourself in what you're doing? I pretty much lose myself. I think early in, mm -hmm. and I had 
really long hair, I would hide behind it. Uh, I would let it like swoop. Okay. And so I was just didn't need anyone to notice that I was playing. Mm. And I've never been one of those guys that wants people to look at me. Yep. Even though that fill, you know what that is. Look at me, look at me, look at me. <laughs> That's what that is. So <laughs> I never wanted that. I never wanted that. Yeah. Okay. Don't look at me. Look at him. Look at the guitar player. He started doing gekadoo, gun gekadoo. Yeah. Don't, right, right. Don't look at me. Don't look at <laughs> don't me. Don't look at me. <laughs> exactly. My wife and I will watch drummers play, and we'll talk about the uh, the drummer face. Now, I'm sure. Do you know what your drummer face is? I think I have a few. You? Oh, okay. I have a drummer face, and I have a percussion face. Oh. Percussion face, unfortunately, is more of a frown. I've noticed lately, and I'm like, that's not good. No. I think it takes more. Um, physical effort mm -hmm. it's more caveman like <laughs> or something well, it's because it's raw hand mm. so it's it's a little more of that which is interesting but mm. i'm going to try i'm going to work on it so i need to smile more when i'm playing percussion is your, your regular drummer face your your drum kit face is that a happy face yeah it could be con considered a grimace i suppose but it's <laughs> but i try to keep my eyes open good you know i don't want to miss anything mm -hmm. so yeah but if drum mm. drummer face is really Fun to watch. Uh, well, the, 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 my favorite was always Larry London, because oh. as he as he'd play, he'd be smiling, oh. and they look and they say, "That's the one I'm going to hit next." There you go. And then he'd look and he'd go, "No, I'm going to hit this one now." Yeah. And hit it. Oh, love that. He about was him. warning the symbols. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to hit you. <laughs> Get ready. Prepared. Okay, so we're coming to close to the end. I got the I got my my five questions oh, that okay. I want to ask you. The the rapid fire. All right. Ready? Okay. Okay. Non-drummers, who are your top three three heroes? Heroes. Yep. Non-drummers. Um, wow. Obama's one of them. Okay. Um, King Carl Gustav of Sweden. Why? Just King Carl Gustav. Yeah. Is he the current king? Yeah. Okay. He's cool. awesome. It's your Swedish and, background. And yeah. then yeah, no, I got to hang with him a few times. But um. Oh really? And then there was a um. There was a uh, a leader in Poland named Lech Walesa. Oh yeah, yeah, Solidarnosc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, he was definitely one of my. Did heroes. you meet him? Oh, many times. Really? We did. We did several events in Poland. We need to talk a lot more. Yeah, I know. Yeah, oh, that's pretty. That's I go way back. And John Paul II was one of them too. Oh, when he was in Poland, I met him before he was pope. Right, and then after as All well. All right, Roger, you're not leaving before we finish on that. I know. Okay, if you could not be a drummer. What would be your second choice of profession? Graphic artist. Really? Mm -hmm. You like the creative release? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I used to paint and stuff too and draw and calligraphy and all that. And yeah, that may be what I end up doing. Excellent. A little more. Of. So for you, I mean, there, there is the physicality of drumming, but the emotion yeah. is, is, a very, is a stronger appeal for you? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. What's the strangest venue in which you ever played? Oh, man. Yeah. I know you well. You just given Solidarnos. You've got a large range of places. Madagascar, really? Yeah. Okay. In in the jungle. Oh. With a twelve piece band. Yeah. That we had to clear parts of the jungle, to play, and then the people came. We didn't even know if anyone was going to show up. That is so cool. Yeah. What was the band? Um, I think we were called. I don't remember. This is like eighty one, eighty two. That's amazing. Yeah. I was going to say bamboo forest, but that's not right. Well, no, that <laughs> that's Asia. <laughs> we actually, I did tour with them for years, but no, it wasn't that band. It that's was a amazing. Swedish, yeah, it was a Swedish band. I can't remember the, the wow. guy's name. Very hip. Yeah, that one was an thing, odd one. One thing that you would never do again. Wow. Um, okay. Steal my dad's car when he was gone. <laughs> Well, you don't have to now. You have your own. Right. right. I would never take anyone else's car because I broke the engine mount, <laughs> and he found out. So. Well, yeah. That, you yeah. learn. You learn those things. Kind of a giveaway when the don't engine's just flipping around on the end. Not good. <laughs> okay. If you were allowed only one rhythm style for the rest of your life, just one, what would that one be? The Purdy Shuffle. Oh, what a good choice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because it just flows. Mm -hmm. You don't have to think. You just feel it. Yeah. And then you watch him smile. And 
it's like, okay, that oh, works. I agree. Yeah. yeah. A friend of mine a little while ago was saying, I've been teaching my daughter the, the about the Purdy Shuffle, <sighs> and I started getting into it again, and I thought, wow, thank you, Jack. You're right. Yeah. It's just so nice. Yeah. <laughs> and Picaro got it. Yes. Um, I mean, the whole the whole thing. It's, yeah. That's probably it. Good call. Yeah. I think we're out of time. Really? Yeah. It still says zero on the clock. <laughs> That means none. <laughs> thank you all very much for coming on, on watching this. And thank you, Roger. Fascinating, man. What a pleasure. Yeah, good job. <laughs>